Rainfall is never a promise in California. In drought years, California borrows water from its underground aquifers, pumping groundwater to make up for the shortfall in surface water. In other areas of California, like in the Pajaro Valley on the Central Coast, the freshwater supply comes from groundwater every year. If more water is pumped out than is replenished, groundwater supplies shrink. Andrew Fisher is a hydrogeologist at UC Santa Cruz studying groundwater recharge in the Pajaro Valley. His lab is working on a multi-pronged effort to not only increase supply, but improve water quality and come up with ways that encourage water users to take part. The Pajaro Valley is an interesting place to work, and it's also a really good place to work in studies of groundwater recharge. Uh, because the region is very dependent on groundwater, it supplies about 85% of their freshwater needs. Uh, the valley is not well connected to the big uh, water infrastructure for the state. The Pajaro Valley has to make do with the resources that they have. Because they grow very high value crops, they have a lot of incentive to solve this problem and figure out how to manage their water more effectively. So an aquifer is a layer of material underground that contains enough pore space between the grains of rock or, or sediment that it can store and transmit water. It's more like a sponge. And we want to identify the places where, where a recharge project could be most effective, where we could get the most water in the ground and have the most benefit. To answer that question and others, Baganskis is developing a regional hydrologic model. Some of my lab mates have worked on making maps that incorporate data from the bedrock geology and the soils. How easily can water move from the surface down into an aquifer? Is there an aquifer even there? Um, these are important considerations to think about. So my focus has really been on the supply side, and the supply that we're focusing on is excess hill slope runoff. So when it rains, and especially during very intense rainstorms, water will flow over the land surface. And we're interested in collecting that runoff during intense storms before it reaches a stream. I've been working at a stormwater collection field site for the last six years. Um, four of those years included the severe drought in California. And in one of those four drought years, the project exceeded its goal in terms of how much runoff it collected. And so even a single intense storm during a dry year can create a lot of runoff and can create opportunity for improving groundwater supply. It turns out it's usually a lot easier to clean water before it goes into the ground than it is to clean it after it's become groundwater. Our primary focus in improving water quality so far has been on nitrate. Nitrate is one of the most pervasive contaminants across the United States and across the world, especially in agricultural areas. Uh, it has been linked to uh, ecological damages, like harmful algal blooms, um, it's also been linked to human health problems. We know that there are microbes that live in the soil that can naturally remove nitrate from water as that water is passing through the soil. And so our question was, how can we stimulate those microbes? How can we enhance their growing conditions, um, make them more likely to remove nitrate at a faster rate so that we can maximize the removal of contaminants from water as it's infiltrating into the ground? The students in the Fisher lab ran multiple experiments at different scales, using soil cores in the lab, one meter plots in the field, and full-size infiltration basins to discover it's the wood chips. In our experiment, we tried two different conditions. We tried one where we just had the regular native soil, and we tried another where we added a layer of redwood chips. The thinking being that adding a carbon source like wood chips can help stimulate that process. The column that's amended with redwood chips removes the most nitrate across a range of infiltration rates. That's an indication that doing something as simple as adding a layer of redwood chips um, or mixing the redwood chips into the soil can have a really big impact on the microbial community. And that in turn can have a really big impact on the water quality. And while the science side is coming up with good ideas, Fisher is also developing a way to address the economic and social side of groundwater management. We've been working on an idea called recharge net metering that we've adapted 
from something that, uh, that public utilities have done for some years as a mechanism to encourage people to generate electricity. In the case of energy, it meant putting a solar panel on your roof, and then if you had excess energy that you weren't using, it would go out onto the grid, and your electrical meter would actually run backwards. In the case of groundwater, we can't make a groundwater meter run backwards, but if we can measure how much water goes into the ground because of certain activities, then someone could be issued a credit against their water fees in exchange for whatever those activities might be. And that revenue can then be used to maintain those systems so that they can continue to infiltrate more water into the ground over time. Because I think this is going to be a learning process as we see what works in the Pajaro Valley and then what might work in other parts of California.